<laughs> Hi, my name is Brian O'Connor. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Commons Alliance today. Um, so I'm going to be telling you about the um, infrastructure, the cloud-based infrastructure that we're building uh, to support bioinformatics um, uh, biomedical research on data stage in Anvil. So I just want to start the, the very fast lightning talk here with just a bit of context of why we're trying to build good cloud infrastructure. And if you look at something like uh, projects like TopMed and HCA, all of us, um, we're really expecting those projects over the next five years or so to produce hundreds of thousands of genomes worth of data. Uh, we see these genomic data sets, they're in the process now of transitioning to cloud environments. And back in the napkin and some Google searching here, it looks like there will probably be about 50 plus petabytes of genomic data on the commercial clouds over the next five years. These are just NIH and associated projects that I tried to Google here to find an idea of what data set sizes we're looking at. So that really motivates us to try and understand what's the, what are some effective ways that we can build infrastructure on the cloud so I can analyze that data, so I can work with that data. It's a lot of data. Um, so what we did um, with these four groups is we put together what we're calling the Commons Alliance. Uh, this is a collaboration between these four groups. This is Robert Carroll's group at Vanderbilt, Bob Grossman's team at the University of Chicago, Anthony Filipakis's group at the Broad and Benedict Payton's group at UC Santa Cruz, of which my team is a part. Um, this collaboration was established to take the best pieces of our technologies and put them together uh, to support uh, that immense amount of data analysis that we want to be able to do on the commercial cloud environment. So in terms of the Commons Alliance projects that we have, uh, the Commons Alliance was created to build this common infrastructure to facilitate data plus compute on the commercial clouds. And in particular, we are funded by two uh, sources, NHLBI uh, Data Stage and NHGRI Anvil. These are projects that we're building these data plus compute environments for researchers on the cloud using our respective technologies. Um, but the components I'm gonna talk about, they're actually used by quite a few other projects as well. And we like seeing this. We like seeing uh, the components we're working on uh, reused across many other projects as well. So what, what are each of the uh, collaborators, what are each of the team, Commons Alliance team members actually doing? Uh, on the Vanderbilt side, they're helping us build technologies to understand how we can compare metadata from project to project. The University of Chicago is working on data storage and authentication and authorization services. Uh, the Broad is focused on sort of analytical engines and, and environments for computing. And then my team at Santa Cruz is focused on how we share workflows and tools and run them in the system. So I'm going <clears throat> to I'm going to take a look at um, each of these systems in turn and then give you a little bit of an idea of how a researcher might use them. Uh, Gen3 is the platform from University of Chicago um, that allows for data um, storage, authentication, authorization, and browsing of the data on cloud environments. So we have Index-D, which is actually tracking files on, on object stores. We have Fence, which is the authentication authorization piece. And we have Windmill, which is our data browser for finding uh, data stored in the cloud. Um, the DocStore project is a collaboration between my team at Santa Cruz and OICR. Um, this is a platform for tool and workflow sharing. Uh, there's going to be a talk tomorrow at BOSC um, at 1020 by Louise. I think that's going to be um, a nice deep dive into this platform. Uh, but this uh, platform allows you to share Whittle, CWL, and Nextflow workflows. Uh, the third component I wanted to highlight is Terra, which is an environment for batch analysis and um, interactive analysis using things like notebooks. Um, Terra lets researchers run workflows in the Whittle format and Jupyter Notebooks on the Google Cloud environment. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the motivation of why we're doing this, the amount of data that we're, we're, we're up against, um, the pieces that we're building individually and collaborating to bring together, but how, does, how do all these pieces actually fit together? Um, here's an example from the data stage project, so NHLBI data stage, where we're working with top men researchers um, as part of the structural variation um, working group. And what we're doing here is taking the infrastructure that we're building and actually doing a, a benchmarking exercise with that group in alpha uh, testing mode right now. So what we're doing is we're onboarding a gold standard data set and NHLBI data into index D. Um, we're uh, uh, using Fence to uh, give access to that data to these alpha researchers. 
Doc Store to bring in structural variation workflows, and Terra to actually run the workflows on this test data, uh, ultimately comparing the structural variation workflows using Jupyter Notebooks. So that's a fairly typical flow uh, for how a user would actually use the data stage or the Anvil environment. Um, taking a step back, though, if you're not part of, if you're not a researcher in data stage or a researcher in Anvil, how would you use this? So Doc Store can be used right now by anyone to find and share portable workflows and tools. Terra can be used by anyone right now uh, to go in and access data, run analysis, run Whittle workflows, uh, notebooks in a very nice uh, sort of user interface. And Gen 3, you can actually use that to build your own compute and data storage and auth environment in clouds. Our ultimate goal here is to take these components that we're building and have many other projects use them as well. So we're um, founding members of Data Biosphere and using that project to distribute our software components. And as Rishi mentioned, uh, the GA4GH, we're embracing those standards to make sure our components are interoperable and working with other groups' components as well. And with that, I just want to say thank you very much, and there's some links for you guys.